covering the uh, kinetic theory of matter, which is one of the first things that you need to know if you're studying IGCSE chemistry. So without further ado, let's begin. So the kinetic theory of matter states that matter is composed of a large number of small particles that are in constant motion. And so this is otherwise known as the kinetic molecular theory of matter or the kinetic theory of gases. So there are three states of matter, you've got the solids, the liquids, and the gases, right? In a solid, the particles are held close by, they're always in fixed positions, and they are always vibrating on its spot. As you start to give the solid more and more energy, the individual particles will gain that energy and vibrate faster and faster. Uh, as that happens, they start to gain separation from one another because they break free from the attractive forces that they have. For, for one another. So therefore, the, the, as, they, as they separate, the particles will eventually become able to slide past other particles um, and sort of move around. And in that instance, we start to call it a liquid. If you start to give it more and more energy, then they will separate even more as they break free further from the attractive bonds. And so the particles have a huge separation in gases. Of course, you've got a name for everything. Uh, from a solid to a liquid, you call that melting. And a liquid to a gas, you call that either boiling or evaporation. Uh, mainly boiling, evaporation is slightly different, but we will cover that in, in the future. Uh, the gas uh, going from a liquid, going to a liquid, sorry, is condensation, and a liquid to a solid is freezing. Sometimes you can skip steps. You can go straight from a gas to a solid. We call that deposition. You can go from a solid straight to a gas, and that's sublimation. Let's look on the properties of solid. The particles are closed and often regularly packed. The particles vibrate about fixed positions. Although the electrons are free to move around the structures which we will look on our next topic, but the atoms itself vibrates in its position. The particles have strong forces of attraction between them. In solid the atoms are regularly packed because of their strong force of attraction between them. Properties of liquid. Molecules slightly further apart than solids and randomly arranged. Strong attractive forces but weaker than solids. Liquid molecules move freely by sliding over each other. This is why liquids can flow easily and can take the shape of the container, as we know liquid has no definite shape. This is another property of liquid but we are not going to mention that, as it is very obvious. Properties of gas. Molecules far apart from each other and randomly arranged. Molecules move about randomly at high speeds in all directions. Gas can spread very quickly, this is a phenomenon which we are going to look next. They have very negligible forces of attraction. Now we are going to look on the changes of state. The diagram shows the process of how each of the matters can change the states. For example, gas can change into liquid by condensation, and back to gas by evaporation. We will see some of the definitions of these processes and changes in molecular properties during these processes. Melting. This is the process how solid changes its state from solid to liquid. When you heat a solid, the energy makes the particles in it vibrate faster and overcome the force of attraction between them. Thus the particle are no longer strong enough to hold them together. Freezing. This is the reverse process of melting. When the liquid is cooled, the particles will move more slowly and force of attraction will hold them into solid. Boiling, when the liquid is so strongly heated that the particles are moving fast enough to break all the force of attraction. Condensation, the particles move slowly and the force of attractions hold them as liquid. Evaporation. This process is slightly different than the others, because it doesn't require any heating or cooling process. Evaporation occurs when some particles on the surface of liquid will have enough energy to break the forces of attraction. Here is the cyclic process. You can try yourself to explain the change of molecular properties during sublimation and deposition. Solid, liquid and gas. And see how substances can change from one state to another. To do this, we're going to use a model called particle theory, or sometimes kinetic theory, which helps us explain how the particles in each state behave by considering each of the particles as a small, solid, inelastic sphere. In solids, there are strong forces of attraction between the particles, which holds them all close together in a fixed position. 
to form a regular lattice structure. And because the particles are fixed, the overall substance keeps a definite shape and volume, so can't flow like a liquid. The particles can vibrate around them, so you can imagine them constantly jostling against one another. Now, if we heat up a solid, its particles gain more energy and start to vibrate even more, which weakens the forces between them. And at a certain temperature, which we call the melting point, the particles will have enough energy to break free of their bonds, and so the solid melts into a liquid. In liquids, there are only weak forces of attraction between the particles, so they're free to move around, and are arranged pretty randomly. However, the weak forces of attraction do mean that the particles tend to stick together, and are fairly compact. This means that they have a definite volume, even though their overall shape can change, allowing them to flow to fit a particular container. If we then heat up our liquid, the particles will again gain more energy, and this will make the particles move around faster, which weakens the forces holding the particles together. Then, once we reach the boiling point, the particles will have enough energy to break the bonds altogether, and so the liquid boils or evaporates into a gas. In gases, the force of attraction between the different particles is very weak, so they're basically free to move around by themselves. This means that gases don't keep a definite shape or volume, and instead will always fill a container as they spread out as much as possible. Now, we normally say that gases are constantly moving with random motion, which is a bit confusing because gas particles actually move in straight lines. They don't randomly swerve. What we really mean by random motion is that the particles can travel in any direction and they'll end up being deflected by solid walls and other gas particles randomly. When we heat up a gas and the particles get more energy, and so travel faster, the gas will either expand if the container it's in is expandable, like a balloon, or if the container is fixed, then the pressure will just increase. On the other hand, if we cool the gas down enough, then the particles won't have enough energy to overcome this force of attraction between them, and so bonds will start to form between the particles, condensing the gas into a liquid. As we cool down the liquid even further, the same thing happens. The particles won't have enough energy to overcome the attraction between the molecules. And this time, even more bonds form, fixing the particles in place and freezing the liquid into a solid. Now, the last thing we need to mention is that if we're working within a closed system, changes in state won't change the mass at all as there's still the same number of particles. However, the density of the substance will change, with solids having the highest density, liquids having slightly lower density, and gases having the lowest density of all three. Diffusion. Diffusion is the random movement or spreading out of particles. Diffusion can occur in gas and liquid but not in solid. We know that molecules cannot move around the structure in solid, so diffusion cannot occur in solid. Note that lighter particles will diffuse faster because lighter particles are faster than heavier one. We will look on an experiment of diffusion of gas. There are two gas jars, one is on top of another which is separated by a glass plate. The bottom jar contains bromine gas which is reddish brown color, and the top jar contains air which is colorless. When the glass plate is removed, the bromine mixed with air randomly and the color spreads. This means that particles in gas are always moving randomly in all direction. This property is called diffusion. To know about next topic, please check our next videos. Thank you. Is the movement of particles through a liquid or gas? It is the movement of particles from where there are lots of them, to places where there are fewer of them. An example of diffusion is the dilution of a coloured solution. For example, if you place potassium manganate in water it slowly spreads out. This is due to the particles of potassium manganate diffusing 
among the water particles. The random motion of particles in a liquid causes the potassium manganate to evenly spread out. Examples of diffusion experiments are ammonia and hydrogen chloride. For example, aqueous ammonia gives off ammonia gas and hydrochloric acid gives off hydrogen chloride gas. If we soak two pieces of cotton wool and place them in the ends of a sealed tube, a white ring will form closer to the hydrochloric acid rather than in the middle. This shows that the particles of ammonia are smaller and lighter and thus diffuse more quickly than the hydrochloric acid. So the Brownian motion basically demonstrates the random movement of particles, right? So uh, our scientist was basically taking a look at a pollen grain uh, and he found that, that, well the pollen grain was inside water, uh, well on top of, floating on top of water basically, and he found that at a microscopic level the pollen grain was constantly moving in a random fashion, right? So this sort of depicts the pathway of the pollen grain. You can see that it's quite random. Uh, and it's always moving so what's really happening is that the pollen grain itself is getting bombarded at a random you know at a random pace by the water molecules or, or, or the water particles right and so you know that would support the kinetic theory by which uh, the the particles are always in constant motion but uh, and the Brownian motion suggests that uh, it's always in random motion as well um, because the pollen grain itself was moving randomly due to the random bombardment of the um, by the by the water particles.